the Empire State Building. Hey, yo, what up? I'm Josh Martinez of Z100 New York's number one hit music station with my guest, Tableau of Epic High. What's going on, man? Good morning. It's not a morning over there, though. No, 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 no. What time is it right now where you are? Uh, it's 9 a.m. here in Seoul yeah, City. So it, it's 8 o'clock at night, so it's still Friday night. Is it Saturday morning over there? Yeah, it is. Well, thank you for working on the Saturday morning, dog. I appreciate that. Oh, no, we're working every day. It's okay. It's okay. I love to work. I was going to say, you guys are used to it, man. 20 years? For real? Yep. Yep. This is our 21st year, believe it or not. So if in the States, if somebody was born uh, when you guys popped off, they could legally drink and celebrate with y'all. I'm not kidding. Like some of the people that I still collab with and that I'm on stage with, Technically, I could be their dad if I, uh, you know, if I had him early. Yeah, I, I feel you. Uh, but I mean, listen, I, I'll keep it real with you, man. 20 years in the game, high level, still successful. Uh, what keeps you what keeps you motivated and, and, and the other two gentlemen as well? See, so I think the three of us, as much as it seems like we hate each other, like on TV or like in appearances, I think secretly deep inside we 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 like each other a lot. Like we would prefer hanging out with each other than anyone else. Mm. So it's we're very lucky that it's like not just a group of three musicians. It's it's actually a group of three friends. Well, I was gonna say almost like brothers, right? Brothers fight, family fights, yeah. but we know at the end of the day who's got our back. Exactly. Exactly. It's the family. And technically, sometimes our actual families have not had our backs. So these guys are actually sometimes more like brothers. I like that, man. Uh, so obviously the chemistry has been there. I mean, 20 years of success, ups and downs, everything in between. Um, obviously, we got the mixtape or whatever dropping uh, less than a week now, right? June 20th. Uh -huh. Do I have the date yep. right? So yep. less than a week from when we're recording this. Um, how is a mixtape going to different differ, excuse me, from previous EPs that you guys have put out? So most of our albums, like full length EPs, um, there's been this like unspoken expectation for us to always have what we would, you know, in the old days call radio friendly hits. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, you, you would say like streaming friendly or chart friendly hits. And what we noticed was that having like one or two songs like that on an album drastically changes the makeup and the sound of the album. Really? Just like one yeah. or two songs on a 12 song. Let's just say 12 songs. Yeah. One song will make you guys feel differently about the album. Really? Yeah. So what happened is it's, it's always expected either by like people we work with or by the audience or even by ourselves. Right. Like, because it's a habit, like we need to have that one chart hit and with this album, what we did is we made two different track lists. We made one with a couple more songs in it um, that is more commercially friendly. And then we made another track list with those songs out. Mm. And we noticed that it, it just sounded totally differently. And one would be called an album, like EP or LP. And one would just be called something else. And we're like, you know, this sounds like a mixtape. The minute we take those songs out, it sounds like a mixtape. So we wanted to kind of just go back to that because this is our 21st year. Technically, after our like blowout 20th year last year, um, this is our first year after that. So we wanted to go back to when we were like rookies and when we were starting in the underground. So uh, just to keep us on our toes. Yeah. Now, in the hip-hop community, uh, you know, when you hear of mixtape, you hear of kind of like unsanctioned songs, right? Beats from other artists, basically. Um, did you guys kind of take that route, or, or is the production still kind of your team and all that type of uh, that, that same approach as an album, just maybe a little more free? All the beats are original beats that we made ourselves, but um, I guess the word unsanctioned still works because it's – unsanctioned in the way in a way where like it's not something we're used to doing 
the type of sound that we're used to doing. Uh, there's like a lot of rules that, you know, we've come to be too comfortable in, like how to make, how to craft hits and stuff like that. And we scrapped all of that. And there's a lot of beat changes. Um, a lot of the hooks don't really, you know, we're not really concerned about whether they're catchy. We just went with what what feels good, uh, what sounds good to us at the moment. So technically, it's unsanctioned by what previous Epic High would have thought. Or, or even to an extent, kind of the the guidelines or that that were set these bars, these parameters set by whether it's management, record labels, anything of the like. So the fact that you guys had that creativity, the creative freedom, really, on this album. I mean, but damn, y'all been doing it for so long. I would hope you would have that trust <laughs> from from other people to to let you guys kind of be free to that extent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What we noticed though is with longevity. Um... It's easier to like get in a comfort zone and really never escape it. Mm. And I think ironically, that's what sort of ends careers as well. Thousand percent. Because yeah. complacency com complacency breeds uh contempt, you know what I'm saying? And and yeah, when you get exactly. comfortable. You just you you feel like you're coasting. And the problem, and and you know this, you've been doing this spanning multiple decades now. Um, music evolves, music changes. So if you're sitting riding high on a on a on a on a wave that's seven years old, ain't nobody else on that wave but you and everybody left already that party, so to speak. Very right? True. You're the only one, and nobody wants to be alone at that party. How do you guys find yourselves um, finding that that uh, kind of that the the evolution of your sound? How do you guys go out and find, I'm trying to find the word and, and, and I'm like stuck on this word that I'm trying to find um, the motivation, I guess I'll use that word, the motivation mm -hmm. um, to evolve because to, to, to our point, you could easily stay stuck on something that was dope 10 years ago. So one good thing about our team is that we have absolutely zero yes men around us. Mm, huge. Yeah. Fucking huge. I will Indeed. curse. Don't worry. Yeah, huge <laughs> these are like some major keys that everyone has to have like the the minute we notice that someone is a yes man or that we're turning our like we're turning ourselves into yes men for each other um we'll cut we'll nip that in the bud like right away and we just we, we just we're just very aware when um someone is telling us what we want to hear and we're also brutally honest to each other like we'll like shit on each other constantly um to the point where people around us are like dude are these guys gonna make it past this year <laughs> but we're like <laughs> but it works so honest and it works it works like if if you know if i if i drop a bar and it's very cringe um my members will tell me they'll be like that is like the worst bar ever wrapped <laughs> on a beat ever like in the history of music and i'll rewrite it i'll make my you know my members like rewrite a track rewrite a verse like eight times to get it done but we're honest you know i saw a tweet that you put out uh, a while ago um that was about basically supporting newer artists because you said and i quote because i remember what it was like being a rookie and no one buying my album yeah who are your favorite kind of uh, newer artists that you're enjoying nowadays? Right now? Mm -hmm. <sighs> or within the last couple of years, even. There's too many to name. Okay. As far as hip hop goes, I can't really name someone off the bat. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm still rocking Kendrick and, you know, listening to J. Cole um all the all the new stuff i listen to i like but i don't think there's like a single name where i'm like oh i'm just listening to this guy right now i feel that back in, back in the day i was like the nas guy when i was a little kid yeah very first album i bought was the Illmatic. so one of the greatest albums of all time easily top three in my opinion yeah 
as soon as I I had Elm Elmatic on rotation, I was like, I'm listening to nothing but Nas, and I don't have that right now. And but but I also feel like, and maybe this is just you know I, I have this conversation with my boys all the time. Like I don't know if it's getting if we're just getting old, right? Because at one point Nas was like that new dude that the old cats were like, nah, this ain't the sound, this ain't the yeah. right sound. So now I'm trying to figure out. Is hip hop really taking a little bit of a step back or am I just getting old, dog? Like, that's my mindset. Yeah, I, I actually. I think it's a little bit of both. A little bit of both. The thing is, when we hear, you know, when we hear songs from our like. Youth, like our teenage years, it just takes us back. So, like. You know, it's hard to really beat that. And it's and the, and the music that's coming out right now is going to be the same for for the teenagers right now. Right. When mm -hmm. like 10 years later, they're, they're going to be the same saying the same thing. Oh, there's no new music better than the stuff we used to listen to. <laughs> Nothing beats Lil Yachty. <laughs> or even even, you know, even more recently, like I Spice over the last couple of years. Right. Yeah. Over the yeah. last 18 months, 24 months, she's been popping off. And only is and only now her first album is about to drop. Y2K. Yeah. Like think about all the buzz around her. And only now we're getting that first. Album. But the game has changed, Um, obviously, with at one point CDs um, when you guys started. And then now it's all about streaming. Um, you, you guys have the tour coming up uh, September through October. Are there any specific cities that you're looking forward to to performing at for a, a unique reason that maybe isn't well known? Well, New York, obviously. Um, New York is actually the the stop that we we, we always tell our promoter, um, our agency, hey, can you like give us like three four days in New York, um, before or after the show so we can hang out because I have a lot of friends there. And this is my excuse to go once a year. <laughs> and and for some reason, I think they're doing this on purpose. But when they route our tour, they won't give me those extra days. Like every tour, it gets shorter and shorter. We used to have like a week in New York. Now, now literally, I have to leave right after the show. And I think they do that intentionally <laughs> because they know I'm having too much fun. See, that's what it is. They don't, they see you having fun. They're like, no business, dog. This is a business trip. They're like, you're moving on. You're moving on to the next city. <laughs> um, is there is there any place that you haven't toured yet that you know you're seeing all this love on social media for, whether it's a country or a continent, even just, or maybe just like a, a specific city that you're like, yo, we gotta we gotta go there sometime. Uh, recently, we went to Abu Dhabi for the first time. Wow. And we were really surprised by the reception. Like people really loved our music. Um, the show was lit, and like that—that's when you like realize, hey, there are so many places that we've never been to. We've been to a lot of places, but there are still so many places left, and so many people to see left. Right. So it—it—it's like a motivating thought because no matter how long you work no matter how hard you work no matter like how you know high up there you are you will never see the whole world right there there's just always more world to see so that kind of motivates us i like that uh when you're when you're not making music not touring you you have let's say a couple months off we don't even want you to to, to, to do anything involving music what do you find yourself doing on your free time uh I haven't had any free time in a long time, but if I, <laughs> I'd either be uh, hanging out with my daughter. Mm -hmm. um, she's just a cool kid to hang out with. She just turned 14 and she's like, you know, she's going to festivals and like, she's really into music. She's always listening to like SZA and she likes a lot of R&B. She likes a lot of classic music, like classic hits as well. Mm -hmm. Um so I, does, I would she, probably, does she does she get does she get cringy when you do any TikTok dances? Not <laughs> dances, but I'll tell you this: she'll sometimes like just slip me a note when I haven't asked for any. But she'll like send me a text, and she'll be like, "Dad, these are the words that I don't want you to use in your raps because <laughs> we're we're past that. We've moved on, Daddy." 
I like that. And I'm like, I wouldn't use these words anyways. And she's like, no, I'm just letting you know just in case. So she'll send me like, like some texts like every couple weeks and she'll be like, daddy, daddy, don't use, uh, don't use this phrase because it's, we've moved on. And it's happening so quick. I'm like, I'm not, I'm just not going to use anything. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me um does she listen to your music and help you help you guys with your music in regards to just having an ear for things or do you try to keep it away till it's like fully done and produced she listens to my music but she'll listen to it like privately okay i, I think it's kind of weird if she like listens to it with me i guess but one way she does affect our process is she's like a she's like a she's like a new a and r kind of really okay yeah because she's like she's she really likes music and she, her her taste is very good so she's always like uh listening to like the newest stuff and the best stuff from the new stuff and she's also like not just in music with fashion as well so mm. she's really in tune, but it's not it's not like other A and R's that we work with who are also young, but that's their job. So they like kind of it's kind of forced where like they're trying to find a new thing, but with her, she just gravitates to it like naturally, very organically. Mm. It's just Whatever she finds, she's like, oh, this is really cool. And it's like something with like maybe, maybe like 500 views. Wow. Right. So she'll find something on like, on like Instagram or something or on YouTube. And it's, it's not even like a thousand views yet, but it sounds so good. So we listen to it and it definitely affects our process as well. It's like having, it's like having our own like super hip. A and R, yeah. Uh, I have an eight month old daughter, uh, so this is my this weekend will be my first Father's Day. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Uh, you have any advice for a fellow girl dad? Uh, girl dads don't need advice because mm. you know we just can't help it. <laughs> you know, I I had I had like you know older older bros like tell me you can't spoil your kid you can't spoil your spoil your kid you can't just do everything she, she wants but uh we can't help it bro eight months eight months old and i'm already like finding things to buy her and if i'm looking for sneakers <laughs> myself like if i'm looking for sneakers i'm like yo let me see if they're if they got these jordans and like the baby sizes and then like exactly. they grow so quickly that exactly. they bro, she's got two pairs of Jordans that she just will never wear because she's just outgrown them already. Yeah, that's that's one one advice I would give though. Stop buying those sneakers. <laughs> I have I have Air Jordan ones and Air Jordan fours for her that I got for her that she's never worn <laughs> because she outgrew them before she could even try them on, and I'm mm -hmm. like. I spent how much on this? Like, because, you know, I always got the like matching pair so that yep. we can wear them together. And I'm like, how much did I spend on this? And it adds up. It adds, it up. adds up. It adds up. Those, those, uh, those companies are smart for making those kid shoes. And then now they do like, uh, the family color waves too. So it's like, you know, mom, dad, kid, or if there's two kids, uh, and I just sit there like a few hundred dollars on sneakers that are going to end up just being tied up to the back seat of my car as like a cute little accessory <laughs> to the back seat of my of my car. And then that's it. Yeah, that's um, true. But switching gears a little bit, if you weren't doing music, what do you think you'd be doing with your life? Uh, this is going to sound really weird, but I think I would have ended up in like uh, technology, like tech. That's not weird at all, dog. You got a master's in four years. Like, fuck. Like, yeah, do something really productive. But I was so not the tech guy when I was, like, mm. in college. Everyone else around me was, like, making Google and stuff like this. And, like, I was like, this. I'm the anti-them. Anti you know, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to 
I want to change the world with my with my words and with my you know with my art and uh and then and then one day I I realized that tech and art are like becoming inseparable. Mm. You know, now it's like I don't even know where the line is between between tech and and art because for me to communicate to my fans, I need the tech. So and and then I noticed that there's there's a lot of similarities too. So um something something in tech I think I would have enjoyed. Cool. And to to go back to like the tech and art thing, like the Drake Kendrick beef re recently, we saw <laughs> firsthand how comparing Jay Z and Nas take over an ether to now all the songs that Jay that that Kendrick and Drake were dropping, literally like there was that one night where Kendrick dropped like forty five minutes after Drake, and yeah. I thought it was like some AI shit because I was like, "There's no way this is real." Sure yeah. shit, it was real. It that was a that was an insane time. I I just gotta say this, regardless of who won, right? Regardless of the discussion over who won, I just want to thank all of them for for entertaining all of us with such precision and mastery. Like I I went I was a kid when I was you know, watching the whole like uh, Nas Jay-Z beef. And that was, that was very entertaining as well. It, it, it was like an incredible time. But this time they, dropping that many songs. Wow. It's like, it's like I went to the bathroom, came back and Kendrick had another song out, <laughs> you know? Completely different from from you know what we were experiencing ten years ago with beef. It'd be like a, a, a four or five days. They would give you like two weeks max before you answer back. Yeah, and and that was like that was very considerate, and it was it was very gentlemanly, right? Um, the 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 guys at Genius probably had the most difficult time of their lives. Imagine figuring out the lyrics. Yeah, in, imagine annotating like the drake song and then kendrick song drops like 40 minutes later and while you you switch and work on that another song drops you it's just you you can never go home <laughs> it was a busy weekend for the folks at genius for sure um you guys you you specifically talk about mental health a lot uh which i think is dope by the way because i do that during my night show a lot as well um, one thing I'm fascinated by is talking to artists about obviously you get off stage and you're feeling the highest high possible. So naturally to get back to an even keel, you technically kind of come down and crash. What do you do to kind of get back to that even uh, mindset in a healthy way? So I think before I became a dad was when mm. it was very difficult. Like before I got married. Because, uh, you know, being like in a room with like you know, thousands and thousands of people and then you you come home and you're by yourself right uh that was difficult but now i think uh you know with with a family of my own um it's not that bad because like you know i'll just go see a movie with my daughter like the day after my you know tour or the day after my shows and i'll feel another type of high that is just as great or even greater, right? So um, I, I think that that's a lot better. And also I, I've learned to uh, kind of train my brain to, it, it's gonna sound very not artsy, but when I'm on stage and there's like spotlights, you know, there's lights and just, you know, thousands of people, um, I, my brain is, works in a way where I'm like, okay, this moment is great, but, you know, enjoy it for what it is. Like, just be grateful for what it is. Um, enjoy it, but realize that this is not, you know, representative of reality. You know, these people aren't here um, because I'm great or because I deserve this or something. You know, they're here because they need 
a couple hours away from their busy day. They need a couple of hours away from their problems, um, you know, their personal stuff. They're just trying to get away from it. And I'm here uh, in the service of them uh, to, to, to make sure that they have a good time for these two hours, right? And, and it, it, that sounds like I'm turning this into like a, like a job, right? But that's that's what it is. You know, that's literally my job. My job is to entertain them. And, you know, they took time out of their lives for me. So, you know, th that's what we do. So before we go on stage, we literally say this to each other. We're like, what do we have to do today? We have to entertain them. We have to make them laugh. We have to make them like forget, you know, what they want to forget for a little bit. And we have to make them leave here with, you know, being being a happier person and focus on that on stage. So it, because it's not about me, there's no high to come off of. Mm. See, that that to me is kind of that's huge. Like, be, it's not about me. So there's no high to come off of. But it takes a while to train, like to, to use your words, train your brain to get to that point because it's yeah. so intoxicating. Uh, to be on stage and and quite honestly dangerous right like if you if you don't have the opportunity to get your mind right it is a very dangerous game to play because to your point you go from a room of thousands and and a stadium even you know what i'm saying tens of thousands of people and then you go home b b by yourself and it's just you yeah. eating cereal at 3 a.m or whatever <laughs> like that's literally my life <laughs> <laughs> Cereal for dinner is my joint, Doug. Um, before we wrap things up, obviously the tour is going to be all, you know, you guys are doing the North American tour, um, Australia as well. Is there anything that you want to say to your fans before the album drops, before the tour kicks off, that they could take in before consuming everything that they're about to consume with you guys this year? Uh, I think it, to continue in the same vein, uh, I've decided to dedicate my life to giving you happy moments, giving you good moments. So mm. hopefully this new album that we drop, like it might be, you know, during your commute or during your like morning workout or something. If any of these songs can make you feel good, motivate you, uh, just make you zone out for a little bit if you want. And if you come to our shows and you walk out of there, being a little bit of a, you know, a stronger person, uh, my job is done. And hopefully I can continue to do that. I love that. And my final question, who came up with that light stick, dog? Because that shit is hilarious to me. And <laughs> simple, easy. I lived in Jersey City and, and at one point and being in this market, you know firsthand, K-pop, J-pop artists, Always come through to New York City. They all have the uh, light sticks nowadays, spinning joints, different type of light ups, different shapes, all that. And then I saw yours, and I was like, "I fuck with this." The, I I swear to God, the the highest sales happen to uh, not not our not our like concert going fans. I think it's it's people who drive to work. Mm. There's a whole crowd of people who aren't even our fans that are buying this. <laughs> it, no, seriously, like I've heard on their way to work, they keep it on this on the passenger seat. And when they when they need it, they just to the next driver. And uh, we just want to thank everyone that's, you know, hustling and like, you know, tr just trying to get to work. Thank you. Thank you very much. And and how do you say it? Is it just Park Yu Bong? Yeah, it's Park Yu Bong. Got it. Park uh, Yu Bong. Which is which works in any language, basically. But it's like Park Yu, right? So in Korean it's it's not Park Yu, it's Park Yu. So it's like sounds like F U. And um Bong is stick, so it, it works perfectly. It, it translates very well in America as well. <laughs> <In English. laughs> you I say didn't it quick enough. Dude, that light stick shit, I, I saw it and I was like, I like these guys immediately. Like even more than ever before with the music and all. I don't even care about the music anymore. This is the, <laughs> like to me, before, and, I, and I know we got to wrap this up, but to me, it's like that is the epitome 
that you're just a bunch of dudes comfortable in your success that sit back and go, hey, now it's time for us to just do what we want and we're about to have some fun. And that is yeah. the epitome of fun right there. Thank you. So one more time, I appreciate you stopping through. Uh, how can fans stay in touch with all things Epic High, man? Just go to epichigh.com. Everything is up there. So uh, just check it out. Simple and easy. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much, dude. From the top of the Empire State Building. C100.